In this video, we're going to be looking at some more past paper questions for algebra, and we'll be focusing on fractions, algebraic fractions, which I know is a lot of people's weak points. I do have quite a few videos explaining this, so check out those videos linked down below if you would like some more help and more examples. But let's jump into the past paper questions that deal with this, including these ones. So with algebraic fractions, the instruction of the question says simplify. However, a lot of the times when you deal with algebraic fractions, we may need to factorize. And this is the case if we multiply and divide algebraic fractions or when we add or subtract. There's going to be instances in most cases where we need to factorize first, whether that is over here, we need to factorize first to find the LCD or whether it's over here in these fractions where we have to factorize in order to cancel out, you know, different brackets. So. In this question, it says simplify the following. There's no mention of the word factorize. However, if you see something like this, so p squared minus 1 over 1 minus p, because we have multiple terms, there's two terms at the top, two terms at the bottom, multiple terms, plus and minus separating them. In this case, it's a minus, but if we had a plus or a minus separating them, both this rule applies to both of those cases, we cannot, cannot say, okay, well, 1 divided by 1 or the 1's cancel or maybe I can divide the p's so I can say p squared divided by p and work like that. You cannot do that when you have multiple terms. If you have more than one term, multiple terms, you must factorize first. So take a look at my fraction over here. Take a look at the numerator. Can I factorize the numerator? I hope you're saying to me, yes ma'am, you can. It's difference of two squares. So how do you factorize difference of two squares? First of all, how do we know that it's difference of two squares? I've got two terms a minus in between, a square number, I can square root one, remember it gives me one, and even exponents, two is an even number. So how we do difference of two squares is plus minus, we do p and p, because remember if you square root p squared, you're going to be left with p, you do two divided by two, that's where p to the power of one comes from, and also remember p times p gets me p squared, and then the square root of one, which is one, so it's gonna be one there and one there. At the bottom, we have 1 minus p. And now you might be getting excited. Now you might be saying, oh, cool. Now, ma'am, we can cancel. So if you think that we can go ahead and cancel these two brackets, you are almost right, but not quite yet. Why can we not cancel those two? I know you're probably thinking, well, this isn't even a bracket. We could put brackets around it, but that's not the point. Why can't we cancel p minus 1 and 1 minus p? Because they are not identical. They need to be identical in order for me to cancel them. So this is a positive p and this is a negative one. This is a negative p and a positive one. So what we need to do in order to be able to cancel these brackets is we need to make sure that the signs of the p and the one are the same in both brackets. They must be identical. So we need to pre perform a sign change. So I'm going to leave p plus one the same. I'm going to leave p minus one the same. Then what I'm going to do is at the bottom, instead of this being a negative p, I'm going to change it into a positive p. And instead of this being a, neg a positive one, I'm going to change it into a negative one. Technically, I could have done it like this. Instead of a positive one, I could have done a negative one. Instead of a negative P, I could have done a positive P. It's the same thing. Negative one plus P is the same thing as saying P minus one. So some of you might think of this as a little bit of a switcheroo. So what we're doing is we're swapping these two around. We're changing both of their signs. But you can't just do that for free in maths. What we need to do is because we did a sign change inside the brackets, we need to do a sign change outside the brackets. This was a positive bracket. It needs to change to a negative bracket. And just think about it like this. If I multiply the negative into the brackets, I get my original sum over here. Okay, so just remember, if I change the sign, I have to change the sign of both things in the bracket. So it went from negative P to positive P, positive 1 to negative 1. So I change the sign of both things inside the bracket. And I need to change the sign outside the bracket. Now these brackets are identical, so I can cancel them. So what I have is P plus 1 on the top and negative 1 on the bottom. What we can then do is we're dividing by negative 1. Okay, so basically... If you have a negative at the bottom of your fraction over here, it's the same thing as having that negative at the top of the fraction and then having that over positive one. It's the same thing. I'm just going to take the bottom of the fraction away, which is then negative P and negative one. Just remember, if you have negative two over three, that's the same thing as having two over negative three, which is the same thing as having the negative in the middle of the fraction. It's the same thing. So here the negative was at the bottom. I just moved it to the top of the fraction and then I distributed it into the brackets. And there's my final answer. My second question, also simplify, but we've got this whole thing going on here. Okay, so how would we do this? 
first things first, when you see algebraic fractions, I need you to think, can I factorize? And you're going to ask yourself, can I factorize the numerator or the denominator? So let's take a look. For my first fraction, for the top, I can actually factorize my numerator, my top of my fraction. For me, it looks like the sum of two cubes. How do I know that? I've got two terms. They both can be cube rooted. I can cube root eight and I can cube root 27. And my exponent here is divisible by three. So this is the sum of two cubes. And remember, how do we factorize the sum of two cubes? I call it also the SOAP method. That tells me about the signs. So you have two brackets. I need a longer sum over here. Okay, so what we're doing, just so that you don't get confused, is I, I'm factorizing the top over here. So the SOAP method tells me that the first bracket must have the same sign. S stands for same. Same sign as this one here. It must be plus. The second sign in this bracket, the sign here, must be the opposite sign. So it must be a minus. And then the third sign must be always positive. Then to get this number over here, we cube root this over there. So it's going to be 3m. How do I know that? Because remember, if you had to take 3m and you had to cube it, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, m to the power of 3 is m cubed. So that gets me that. So I cube root the first one, then I cube root the 8, it gets me 2. Then to get this number over here, I must square this first term. So 3m, I must square it. It gets me 9m squared. To get this number over here, I square this one. So 2 squared, which is 4. And then to get this one in the middle, what I do is I multiply these two together. 3m multiplied by 2 is 6m. Remember the signs whether this is a positive or negative, and this one and this one, we determine using SOAP. If that confused you, you don't remember how to do that. I have a whole playlist linked below on factorizing, and I do the sum or difference of cubes there. So please watch that if you don't know how I did that. Then at the bottom, so we factorized this one. So I'm going to just put a little tick mark there. Then the denominator, I can take out a highest common factor of 3. What I'm left with is 3m plus 2. Remember, if you multiply this back in, you should get where you started. Okay, so I factorized that one. Then I've got a multiplication sign. So multiplication, I've got m minus 3 at the top. Can't factorize that, so that's all good. And then this at the bottom is a trinomial. So to factorize a trinomial, I need two brackets. I'm making 6, negative 6 here. So maybe 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. I'm trying to make a plus 1 in the middle. So I'm going to go 3 minus 2. That gives me positive 1. Yeah, that works. So m plus 3 and m minus 2. Remember, if you want to check if you factorize correctly, multiply it back out. If you get where you started, you are correct. Again, if you need help with trinomials or factorizing, or if you need me to explain that a little bit better, you have to go watch my videos on factorizing. Okay, then divide. I'm going to deal with the division thing now. I first want to get the factorizing out of the way. How do I factorize this up here? That would also, that looks like a trinomial to me. I can't take out a highest common factor. It's 9, 6, and 4. It looks like a trinomial to me. So you will factorize the trinomial. But if factorizing the trinomial doesn't work, it doesn't seem like it's working in this case, it's always good to see if you can do it. In this case, it doesn't look like a trinomial to me. You can try it for yourself, but I don't think it's going to work. So we can leave it like that. Okay, I can't factorize our trinomial. None of the factors are going to work out. And another reason why I could see it's not going to work out is just look here. Do you see that? That looks the same as that to me. So maybe looking ahead at the sum, they will be able to cancel. I'll show you why in a second. So we can't factorize that. And then this one, 3m minus 6, I can take out a 3 and I'm left with m minus 2. Okay, so I factorized everything. You will get marks for factorizing. So my next step is if you are dealing with division, you need to apply the method KFC or another method that I call it is tip and times. Just to recap that method over here, if you have, for example, 2 over 3 divided by 5 over 6, what you can do is the tip and times method or the KFC method, you keep the first fraction the same. You flip the second fraction. So instead of 5 over 6, it's 6 over 5. You flip it over. You tip it over. 
and you change the divide sign to a time sign. And then you can multiply. And we know that it's easier to multiply. You say two times six, which is 12, and three times five, which is 15. And then you can simplify that to four over five. So what I mean is you use KFC to get it from a division to a multiplication sum. Okay, tip and times KFC. So how do I apply it over here? Well, my first fraction is being multiplied by my first fraction. So nothing here has to change. I'm going to rewrite all of that as is. But then if you take a look, this fraction is being divided by this fraction. So you apply KFC. You keep the first fraction the same. So there it is. I kept it exactly the same. You flip the second fraction. So the 3, m minus 2 must go to the top. And the 9, m squared minus 6, m plus 4 must go to the bottom. So this thing, you just tip it over. Okay? And then you change this divide to a multiplication. Now what we can do is because it's fraction multiplied by fraction, multiplied by fraction, I am allowed to cancel brackets. Now, we can cancel up and down. So for example, if I had like an x plus two over here and an x plus two over here, upstairs and downstairs can cancel. You can also cancel sideways like this, vertically like that. So for example, if you take a look at m minus two, this bracket over here, can cancel vertically with this bracket over here. So vertically, like across the multiplication sign, they can cancel. So this one cancels with this one. Don't scratch it out too much that your teacher can't see what you've written underneath. Then, like I said earlier, remember we said that this bracket looks exactly like this one. Now they are vertically across from each other, if you can see like that, they can also cancel. So that cancels with that. Then up, upstairs and downstairs can cancel. So the 3m plus 2 can cancel with the 3m plus 2. And then 3 can cancel with 3. And what am I left with? Look at all the upstairs. The only thing left upstairs is m minus 3. The only thing left downstairs is m plus 3. And that's your final answer. Now, some students want to go further and cancel the m's out here. No, you cannot. And the reason why is because, again, I've got two terms at the top and two terms at the bottom. So we cannot cancel, that's my final answer. In this question, I am subtracting two algebraic fractions. Now, if you add or subtract two algebraic fractions, you need to remember the following. Factorize your denominators, if possible, to the bottoms of your fractions. Then you find your LCD. You must put all fractions over the LCD. What you do to the top, you do to the bottom. And we don't drop or take away the LCD. So let's do it. Remember our very detailed explanation videos for these things linked in the playlist below, but let's do this question. So factorize the denominators if possible, that denominator and that denominator. I can't factorize the first fraction. 2a minus one cannot be factorized. Let's see if I can factorize the second fraction. We can also factorize the top if we want. So we got 4a plus two. So that would be, you would take out a two and that would be left with 2a plus 1. It may or may not be useful to have the top factorized as well. So let's see what happens. The bottom, this, looks like difference of two squares. I've got two terms, a minus in between, square numbers and even exponents. So difference of two squares is plus minus. We've got 2a here and 2a here. And then we've got a plus 1 and a minus 1. That is difference of two squares. So basically what I've done is I've factorized the bottom to become this, difference of two squares. Now what I can do is I need to see, can I simplify this first fraction before I carry on? No, I can't. Can I simplify the second fraction before I carry on? Yes, I can. The 2a plus 1 over here can cancel with this 2a plus 1. You're allowed to do that. Remember, you can, once you have one term at the top, which I do now have, and one term at the bottom, which I now do have, then I can cancel top and bottom if possible, which it is possible. So what I'm left with is two over two a minus one. And can you now see that they actually have the exact same denominators? So they're already over the same denominator. So when I add or subtract fractions, I keep the denominator and I say three minus two. 
So at the top of the fraction, I'm going to have one over 2a minus one. And I can't go any further. I can't cancel out the ones because I've got two terms at the bottom. And that's it. If this part confuses you, why I only wrote the denominator once, think of it like this. If I have six over eight minus one over eight, how do you answer that for me? If you're subtracting and the denominators are the same, you keep the denominator there and you say six minus one is five. We applied the same rule over here. I hope that you found that helpful. I'll see you in another past paper video very soon. Subscribe for more. Bye everyone.